To have an efficient installation, the following pre-checks and installation tips should be carried out. Verify all parts have been received by checking them against the packing list. Check the rating label and safety labels on all burner boxes to make sure that all clearance to combustibles will be met. Identify all the combustion tubes which will have a special marking. There should be one combustion tube per burner box and it should be installed just after the burner box. 175,000 BTU models and higher should have a stainless steel tube clamp between the first and second radiant tubes. Installation is now ready to begin. It is best to start the installation with the vacuum pump first. All PB series pumps are provided with the necessary adapter fittings as well as isolation boots that mount before and after the pump. The NC7 pump does not require any adapter fittings or isolation boots. All pumps, however, do come with a stainless steel primary damper which mounts before the pump as shown. Be sure to use recommended sealant at all joints to minimize any condensation drippage in the building. All systems come with three sections of baffle. The baffle should be placed in the tube or tubes as close to the exhauster pump as possible. Tube installation will begin at the pump. It is critical that the tube mounting starts with the run with the greatest amount of condensing tube. If there is no condensing tube in the system, start with the longest run. After the first run is completely installed with all tubes, dampers, and so on, install the run with the next greatest amount of condensing tube, and so on, and so on, until all runs are complete. All condensing tube must be sloped downward at one quarter inch per 10 feet as it approaches the pump. Detroit Radiant recommends the use of turnbuckles. The standard Radiant tubes must be mounted level. It may be easiest to start by mounting the first tube with two hangers spaced approximately eight to nine feet apart. Every tube thereafter should only need one hanger spaced at approximately eight to 10 feet apart. Be sure the clamps are installed directly over the seams and tightened to the specifications in the manual. For reflector installation, it may be easiest if the reflector is mounted at the same time the tubing is installed. There should be an approximate four inch overlap at reflector joints. Reflectors can be secured by sheet metal screws except for several locations where expansion joints are needed. Mount the burner control box level and be sure the sight glass is visible from the floor. For vertical venting of condensing systems, a condensation trap will be required as shown in the manual. An initial startup of the system must be balanced. To begin, set the primary and secondary dampers to half open. Now, the system must run in high fire mode for at least 20 minutes. If a particular burner does not light and stay lit, the dampers may need to be adjusted to get the burner or burners to light for the initial 20 minute startup. Refer to the chart in the manual for the proper box pressure based on the burner model. Using a manometer with adequate range, measure the vacuum at the burner farthest away from the vacuum pump. Adjust the primary damper at the pump until the manometer reaches the specified reading. If secondary dampers have been installed in the system, connect a manometer to the designated burner and adjust the secondary damper until the burner reaches its specified reading. All dampers must be readjusted a second time in the same order. 